you know, and we're talking a little bit about propagation. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, it's um, interesting. Uh, it's a lot of a lot of people have been complaining all summer long about the summer doldrums. You know, it's propagate all. You know, the propagations in the in in the in the crap house. It's terrible. You know, I'm not getting. I'm not getting anywhere. About. I've been having just a, it's been a bang up for me. <laughs> you know, it's and and for a certain extent, for the last four, you know, four months or you know, three four months. It it has been really kind of a variable, and there's been some challenges, deep fades, and and things like that over the last few months. And there is an actual scientific uh, reasoning for this of of what they call the summer doldrums. And I found an article online that I kind of wanted to to share with that. I'm just gonna pull the screen up here. So why is this was written by uh, Thomas, NU7US. Why is propagation on shortwave HF terrible right now? And um, basically what's happening in the summer months is it's, it's got a lot to do with the F layer. Uh, during the summer, increased solar radiation heats the atmosphere, you know, because the sun is a lot higher in the northern hemisphere and it's going to heat things up. And that causes the F2 layer to expand. Um, and as it expands, it's it's spreading out into a wider space, wider space. So it it's um, its density decreases, and so that weakens its ability to reflect radio radio waves. With this extra daytime sun, you know, sunlight, the that also creates you know more absorption of the D layer. So. Between the um, the weakening of the F2 layer and the increased absorption of the D layer, you know, what do you what do you end up with? You end up with kind of kind of dumpy propagation, and um, that happens. You know, it it starts about the end of April and it runs through about now, really, um, through uh, mid you know the end of August into. Uh, I feel like I've really kind of hit that turning point over Labor Day weekend. It felt like all of a sudden the um, the propagation just sort of uh, shifted, and I heard a lot more, you know, stronger, better signals on 20 meters this last weekend than I have, you know, for the last three months. So it's. Um, as we move into the fall months, you know, what we're going to, yeah, we'll, we'll all of a sudden yeah, that shift with shorter days and less absorption in that D layer, we're going to get, you know, better, uh, better, better um, performance on these upper bands, especially now that we're at the peak of the solar cycle, listen for 15 meters, 12 meters, and especially 10 meters, because mm -hmm. from now until, you know, it's, it, it 10 meters is going to get progressively better until we get to like December, January, and it's just going to be, you know, December 10 meters is always amazing. That's why the 10 meter contest is in December. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, it's, that's the perfect month for the 10 meter band because just short days, even though, even though 10 meters is a daylight, daylight band, it's just that those, those short days with reduced absorption really just, just kick that band into overdrive. So. Yeah, yeah, especially especially uh, gray line, ten meters mm -hmm. in the winter is stupid crazy. That's the time that I've worked ten meters on Japan, yep. in not great conditions. Um, that's when you really need to be listening to that in early morning or late afternoon, early evening, right around dawn and dusk when that gray line comes through, and then that's when you pick up some real fun stuff. You can you can hear it come in. You know, yeah. you're just listening, yeah. and then there'd be a very faint station. And I heard a, a, a very faint JA station, and I waited about 20 minutes, and then it got booming. And that's when I made my <laughs> call, and I picked them up on the first call. I'm like, oh, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. your contests, your big contests are all late October, early November, right? Yep. Those are the ones. Yep. And again, there you go, because they're picking up that. Now, another thing, too, is that in the summer, on the lower bands, we're affected by storms, right? All the mm -hmm. atmospheric stuff. You don't have any of that in the fall, right? 
You don't got to worry That's about correct. that. At least up yeah. here in the northern hemisphere, that helps out. So um, I'm really looking forward to this winter, uh, especially stuck at home. And, you yep. know, what else do you have to do here in Wisconsin other than, you know, build snowmen? Well, we can yep. work a lot of DXs here, I think. It's it's going to be yeah because this is this is the peak this is we're at the we're at the top of the cycle right now so it's yep. um and as Colin says <clears throat> it's not you know in VK it's not terrible here but it's also their spring so it's uh, right. you'll as as we get better you know as our conditions get better and better you know them in the southern hemisphere they're going to see that they're going to see that shift the other direction. So. Yep. Yeah. So what, this is probably the time, guys. If you want to work Asia, um, Australia, this is when you got to start trying to work them. So. Yep. Yep. The equinox. E you know, the equinox is coming up in um, two weeks. A, two weeks, and actually, it's um, perfect. The the best time to do that kind of stuff, um, just because you know the the way the you know the way the the sun is. I had another article here. Um, you can see as the season changes to the September equinox, you can see the openings shift earlier in the day. Not so much absorption, but it extends into the higher bands. 10 and 12 meters are great bands on a north-south path in the fall, and 15 meters is reliably open for 13 hours all day long. So, uh, and that's 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 about the time when the, when the equinox ox hits. So it's uh, uh, that's you know be you know. Be aware of that in about in about two weeks, or as we're recording this, you know, on September twenty first, um, which um, a day so uh, memorable, Earth, Wind, and Fire recorded a song about it. And it's his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> I don't remember that because when you were bored, that was a long time ago. That was a long yeah, time ago. Come down from the mountain yet? <laughs> so, all right. So, you know, we're we're through the summer doldrums, and it's going to get better. <laughs> and thank you for coming to Michael's TED Talk. It's a TED Talk, absolutely. <laughs> KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.